After conversion has taken place, then it's time to do the validation. And there are three ways. Within the standard validation, we've got some out-of-the-box validators that we can use. And there are two custom validating options. One using a validator method, which is in a backing bean, and the other is to use a validator object that we define in a class. Both of these are associated with UI input components because the validation is only going to check that the string that comes in is valid, having been converted to the right type, and then, if it's valid, can be used to update the component tree and then the backing bean, the model. So these are some of, most of, the standard validators. Validate long range will allow us to validate a long value for a given range and minimum and maximum will specify the range. If the string that has been typed into the input text box fits within that range, then the validation passes. If it doesn't, then there's a validation exception. And as we saw with the converter, we'll get some error messages. And we can do that with double values as well. For strings, we can validate the length, and also, we could validate strings against a regular expression. And these all work in the same way. So here's an example where we've got an input text that needs to be an integer. So the ID is age. It's bound to the age property in the user bean. And therefore, the conversion will happen first. The string will be converted to an integer. We can use the validate long range tag to make sure that that integer value is in the range 1 to 100 inclusive. And if the value is outside of that range, then the message for age will be displayed in this example immediately underneath that text box. Again, not a very nice error message. So we can specify an attribute called validator message to override that standard message. And there's an example of it. Validator message equals should be 1 to 100, which then gives us that error message instead. If we want to use a validator method, then this is a method, an arbitrary method that we put into an arbitrary class, and then we can call it. So, for example, in our backing bean, we could write a method called validate age, and then we can link to that. The validate age method will have this signature, and then we write our validation code in the method body. To call it, we specify the validator attribute in the input text tag and use the expression language to link to that validator method. So user.validateAge will call the validateAge method. And the method would look something like this. We're going to potentially throw a validator exception. We don't need to do the integer.parse int because the object that comes in, that parameter called value, will already have been converted by the converter. And so we know it's going to be of the right type, which is an integer. So we can convert value to an integer using type conversion and store its value in age to check. Then we can do our validation test, which is if the age to check is less than 1 or greater than 100, then it's out of range. So we set up a message and then throw a new validator exception, passing a new faces message that contains the message that we've just described. The existence of that exception will be enough then to trigger the abortion of the life cycle and the original view will be displayed using that error message or using this error message that's on the validator message attribute. On the other hand, we might want to write our own validator class. And that's okay, so long as it implements the validator interface. This then will be managed by the framework, and it will exist for as long as the UI component that it's bound to exists. The validator class will look something like this. We'll have the annotation faces validator, with value equals and then the validator ID. You'll notice that the class, call it whatever you like, implements val validator and that we're overriding the one method that this interface specifies, which is public void validate with that interface, throws validator exception, and then we put the validation code in there. The code that we put in there will be exactly what we saw on the previous example. It's just that we would not have the validate age method 
in the bean, we'll take it out and put it in this class instead. And in the XHTML, instead of using the validator attribute in the input text tag, we will nest within the input text tag a tag called fvalidator with valid validator ID equal to the ID specified on the class. So what we've now seen are the two major processes that take place in the lifecycle, conversion and validation. They are crucial to a successful operation of the JSF framework. We can use standard converters and standard validators, or we can use our own converters and validators by writing our own and then linking to them in the ways that I've just shown you. By doing this, you're then removing all that low-level conversion and low-level validation that you had to do when you were using servlets and Java server pages. And this is one way in which JSF makes life much easier when developing internet applications.